Welcome to day two of the Blessed Unrest Conference. We promise you another amazing, um, really um, heartwarming, thought-provoking, and challenging day, and a musical one as well, because during the lunch break, we'll be entertained by Ariel Martinez Cohen, who um, sang at our last conference. She's a singer, songwriter, and an activist with the youth movement Zero Hour and um, a terrific, uh, you know, a really terrific young person. She'll also be on a youth panel later in the conference, probably the last day, but we'll let you know that last day lineup is still, is still in process. So, so having said that, I want to, um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank the team that has also made this conference possible. So I don't know whether you, you can't stand up if we were in a live program, I'd say stand up everybody, but instead if you are here already and want to wave, please do. So the team that has helped make this possible is obviously John Minkle, Jim Laurie, who's also staff scientist, Bob Labrie, I know Bob's here and can wave, Christopher Haynes, Fred Jennings, Jed Catch, Charlie Shaw, and Randy DiBaccio. So we're very grateful to you for your input and your moral support as we've put together this, you know, pretty challenging conference. So when we began to plan this conference, we wanted to show people, you know, the incredible number of individuals and organizations and communities that were working to heal the planet. Um, and also to offer hope and inspiration to inspire people who are pretty depressed, most folks, um, and some actually in despair to, to provide hope and to inspire you to action. We wanted actually to make Paul Hawkins' blessed unrest concept come to life with people working in a variety of ways all over the planet. So it feels as though we've done that. And uh, so far, um, yesterday, Ronnie Cummings, Susan Jennings, Jano, Jano, Mendla de Suarez, and Pablo Suarez began the story. And today, Holly Parr of the Dogwood Alliance and Rabbi Ellen Bernstein and Hayat Imam, who will be presenting a faith panel introduced by Rev Deli. Um, and music at lunch with Ariel, and then the last speaker of the day will be Roland Bunch. Roland has, is working in Southeast Asia, Africa, South and Central America, helping train farmers in regenerative agroecological ways to farm. He's been doing this for a very long time, has published four books, and um, after after his talk, he will do the only workshop we'll have this afternoon. Holly also has a workshop to present, but her workshop can't be today since she's bringing some of the community people from the South and Southeast to be with her and they aren't able to present on Sundays. So Holly is scheduled, I think for May 2nd, her workshop, but she'll tell you about that when she presents. Um, and today, and Roland, by the way, will be presenting his workshop with Florence Reed. Flo Reed is the uh, founder of Sustainable Harvest International. She'll be presenting later in the conference, but they're going to be doing his workshop together and they will be doing Flo's workshop together on the second. So, 
Today we'll follow the same format as yesterday. We'll have two, two presentations, each of them with a question and answer period. Then we'll have the musical lunch break. And uh, after that, Roland will speak. Uh, I think that covers those details. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you something briefly, because there's much more about what working on this conference has meant to me, what I've learned from it. First of all, it's been really exhilarating to learn about the people who are working regeneratively in parts of the world that we really haven't ever had a close up look at, which would be people right here in the South and Southeast in the United States, peasant farmers in Africa and Asia and South America. And uh, later in the conference, we hope to have La Via Campesina represented um, also a peasant movement reaching millions of peasant farmers. And in addition, we've also reached out and- That line means it's not sharing video. Included faith communities, which we have not directly done before. And it's been a real been a real learning experience for us because expanding our outreach to worlds that we hadn't had a lot of contact with. Um, yeah, I realize for myself how much we needed to learn and will continue to learn about other points of view and other belief systems. Because if we're going to come together as an effective global regenerative movement, move out of our silos, we really need to learn about the other folks who are doing incredible work. On a certain level, it seems like the conference for me has become a kind of equalizing tool. People all over who are working very hard <clears throat> on their own few acres or on larger landscapes um, are in fact often viewed as kind of victims and powerless by us in the Western world. But in fact, they're way ahead of us. And they are leaders and teachers in terms of what's involved in regenerating the planet. So um, we can't, we actually can't solve the problem that we're trying to solve without them. And I think it's really time for us to acknowledge that and celebrate it and to learn about them. So, and I should say, I'll just mention again another um, incredible voice from Africa because we actually have three speakers who'll be talking about what's going on in Africa. In addition to Roland Bunch, Precious Ferry from Zimbabwe, who've spoken at, at two of our conferences before, and Alfred Brownell from Liberia, whose work on preventing the palm oil interests from getting control of, you know, an enormous amount of Liberian forest, which is part of the lungs of Africa. We think of the Amazon as the lungs of the planet. There are other equally important places and the lungs of West and Central Africa are just as vital. And so, the Southeastern US. And the Southeastern US, which Holly will talk about, the people who are fighting and dealing with and fighting the wood pellet industry, taking down the forests in our own country. So, and then, in the midst of all this, the rug was pulled out from underneath us by a little something that showed us that um, it's really in charge of things. We're not as in charge of things as we like to think. So that has been difficult, challenging, but also has opened up some real possibilities. Having this conference as a 
video event actually turns out to be much more intimate and personal than certainly I think we expected it to be. And um, it's really nice to get to see many of you. We'd love to see more of you. But um, there are other possibilities. And I think our speakers yesterday Um, our other speakers, <laughs> our other speakers um, yesterday mentioned the possibilities that people staying at home has opened up in terms of becoming more reflective about how we live, um, definitely increasing the possibilities of the localization movement as a solution that can make sense to many more people. And later in the co conference, you'll hear from a permaculturalist, Sven Peel, about what's actually happening in Connecticut is his particular bailiwick, but that's happening around us. And, you know, talking about the forests and talking about forests in the Southeast, it's, um, it's really important what Holly is going to talk about in starting us off is incredible. And um, if it's not, if I'm not going on too long, I just want to also say that we were reminded yesterday um, by Jeannot of the role that young people can and must play and the importance of hearing what they're thinking about and encouraging them in their leadership. And um, here at Bio for Climate, we are working on developing some educational programs. And Susan Jennings certainly showed us some terrific youth education that she's doing at Agraria. So bringing together yesterday and today, um, I'd like to introduce Holly Please. Are there any questions? Um, that's really nice and very nice back. Um, please mute yourself if you're not a speaker. Okay. So Holly, there you are. Hi. Okay. So Holly is the Advancement Director for the Dogwood Alliance, which is based in North Carolina. She's actually a lifelong activist, starting at age 13. And uh, she began as an activist in the LGBTQ and the HIV AIDS movements. And she has She's made for herself a life of service for uh, and spiritual reflection into careers, you know, that have spanned social justice, youth empowerment, outdoor leadership, and now forest protection. So at the Dogwood Alliance, um, she's, as I said, the advancement director, but what that means is that she's out there working with the communities that are on the front lines in the South and in the Southeast, whose communities are being flooded by the destruction of the forests uphill, and of course, by the force of hurricanes coming in. And we're going to learn from her and from the folks who'll be at her workshop about the amazing work, community building and forest protection work that's going on. So, ready for stories and for Holly. Um, take it away, Holly. <laughs> 